All right, at ease, man. At ease, man. All right, my name is Yehoshua. I'm with Israel United in Christ. And we are here to teach the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that you're God's chosen people. That's right. That you're greater than anything that the so-called white man has ever taught you. That's right. That you're better than anything that they taught you. Your history has been lied to you. They told you you were a slave, but God says you were a God. They told you you were a nigger, but God says you were an Israelite. Right. They told you you was a hoe, but God says you're a princess, a daughter of Zion. That's right. All right, but the job that we must do is that we must repent and return back to our heritage as the Israelites. Not as the Christians, not as Muslims, not as seven-day Adventists, not as five percenters. We must repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's right. Give me Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. I know you got a question, and I'm going to answer your question, all right? Read this. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 4 and verse 17. Read. For that time, Jesus began to preach. So Jesus the Christ, a so-called black man, they would have called him a nigga if he was here on the earth today. Jesus Christ, you understand Christ was a black man? Yes, sir. You understand Jesus Christ was a black man? Absolutely. Absolutely, all praises. So what did the so-called black man say? Read. And to say, repent. Do what? Repent. The reason we must repent is because all the things that we've learned here in America have taught us the ways of sin. They've destroyed our people. That's right. They've corrupted our minds. They've destroyed, they turn a man to be effeminate. He acts like a woman now. He's emotional. They, they made a woman put on pants and now she's got a masculine spirit on her. Now she want to chest bump and argue with her husband. Exactly, oh, exactly right? Yeah, You've experienced that? You've been seeing that a lot, especially ever since Kevin Samuels died, the so-called black woman then got unleashed in this place called America. It's been happening since slavery. It's happened since the Willie Lynch letter. They took the strongest of us, they strapped one foot to one horse, one foot to the other, and told the horses to run the opposite way, ripped out hind parts into two. Right. They said if they'll destroy the strongest of us, the rest of us smite the shepherd and the sheep will do what? Scatter. That's, that's, that's the old saying. Smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. So anytime you have a so-called black man rise up to power, what does the American government do to him? They put him down. Like a dog in the street. They kill him. They get rid of him. Because the, the uh, what, what's, what was his name? J. Edgar Hoover. Omar Gaddafi. J. Edgar Hoover, he was the, the leader of the CIA. He said the greatest threat to American society is a black messiah. A black messiah. So the greatest thing that could bring this place down is an image of a man that looks just like the people that they enslaved. Right. They understand that. That's why we get a lot of adversity when we come out here to teach you that Jesus Christ is the black messiah. And we are his followers, we are his disciples, we are his apostles sent back to resurrect the dead estate of our people. Read that again. From that time, Jesus began to preach and say, uh -huh. repent, Read. for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of, he of heaven is at hand for the so-called blacks, the so-called Hispanics, the so-called Native Americans. But only if you change your ways, black man. Only if you change your ways. Only if you put down the shrimp. Only if you put down the pork, only if you stop shaving your face, can you inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's, right. That's what Jesus the Christ said out of his own mouth. Give me Matthew chapter 19. We're out here to teach our brothers and our sisters how to inherit everlasting life. How to get that heaven that they've always taught us about in Christian church, but they never taught us how to get there. They lied to us on how to get there. They say Christ said, come as you are. Does the Bible say come as you are? I've never read that scripture. Christ himself didn't say, come as you are. What did he say? He said, repent. Repent. That means that you cannot come as you are. If you do not repent, there is no kingdom of heaven for you. Read this. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 19 and verse 16. Read. And behold, one came and said unto him. Somebody came up to Christ while he was doing the same thing that we're doing today in Chesapeake, Virginia. Somebody came up to Christ and what did they ask him? Read. Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So somebody wanted to know Christ, master teacher, master of understanding of God's law, statutes, commandments, the yeah. prophecies. What good thing 
does the so-called black man, woman, and child have to do to get everlasting life? What is Jesus Christ going to say? Wait. And he said unto him, uh -huh. why callest thou me good? So the first thing you got to do is humble yourself and realize that there is no one good other than the Most High God. That's right. We were all born into sin. We're all subject to, uh, to transgressions. But we must humble ourselves to the one that created us. Read. There is none good but one. Read. That is God. Uh-huh. But if thou will enter into life. If the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that are living in Chesapeake, Virginia today, if you will enter into life, what must you do? Keep the commandments. The Bible says that you must keep God's commandments if you want everlasting life, my brother. My brother right here in the blue, if you want everlasting life, what do you have to do? You have to repent and keep his commandments. Now, do you know what you must repent from, my brother? Okay, all praise to the Most High. Give me First John. Give me First John. I'm going to show you what sin is, all right? The reason I'm going to show you what sin is, is because that word is real familiar in the so-called black community. But nobody in the black community can tell me biblically what it means to sin. If I ask you, what does it mean to sin? You, you probably don't know. If I ask my brother right here, what is sin? The answer that we typically get is going against God, doing anything bad. But nobody can show me in the Bible what it means to sin so that they know exactly what they must stop doing. All right, so I'm going to define it biblically. Read. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Read. Whosoever commit of sin, transgressive also the law. Uh -huh. For sin is the transgression of the law. The Bible says that sin is the transgression of the what? The law. The law. The law. So that means if I'm going to repent from my sins, that means that I'm going to repent from breaking God's what? Commandments. God's commandments. God's laws. Exactly. Give me Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 30. Yes, sir. Give me the book of Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 30. All right. Now, my brother, I'm going to show you what repentance is and what we're turning away from. And I'm going to give you some examples of things that we must change from. Read that. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 30. Uh -huh. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. God says he's going to judge the house of Israel because he chose the house of Israel. Do you understand that you're an Israelite? Yes, sir. You do? You understand that you're an Israelite? I do. Bro. All right. Y'all tell me what tribe y'all come from. Judah. You come from the tribe of Judah. What tribe you come from? I say either Judah or Benjamin. I don't know. Okay. Your father, what's his nationality? He's a black man, African-American. Okay, so if your father's an African-American, you an African-American. Right. So that means your father's from the tribe of Judah, that means you from the tribe of Judah. That's right. Don't save the Lord. Right. I got a question about lineage. About lineage? Yeah, you're the seat of your father. Okay. Correct. But back in the, um, in the slavery days, in the segregation days, they didn't want to talk about the Come a little closer, because I'm having a hard time here. Let's say, for instance, somebody's father is white. Right. And the uh, father is black. And they have a baby. You said that one job, who would be black? You're just black. I'm going to answer your question. Don't forget your question. Excellent question. And I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer it. In short, they lied to us about everything. That's right. All right, the same man that taught you that taught you to shave your face. The same man that taught you that taught you to keep Christmas. The same man that taught you uh, if your mama's black, and then you black. Even though your father is white, he's the same man that told you to go to church on Sunday and he told you you was a nigga here in America. Right. All right, you can't trust. The Bible says to never trust your enemies, all right? I'm going to show you what the Most High God says about your question. We're going to finish dealing with repentance and we're coming right to that, all right? All right, finish this verse up. Stay close, brother. Stay close. Read. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. And this judgment has already happened. Did our people not come over here on ships? Oh, uh, yeah. Did I, is one of our brothers, did not he die with a knee on his neck? Uh, yes, sir. Did one of our sisters not just get shot in Kansas, yes, pregnant, with her hands in the air? Uh, yeah. We've been judged because of our sins. Because we've turned away from keeping God's commandments. God has brought his sore judgment upon our people. We, we're, we're being cursed because of the sins of our forefathers. We have not received the benefits yet. The benefits come after we repent. Keep reading. Verse 30. Uh -huh. Everyone according to his ways. Read. Save the Lord God. Uh -huh. Repent. Do what? Repent. The, 
The Bible tells the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to repent from your life of sin. That's right. So that means all your sisters going in there getting that blonde hair, getting that weed put on top of your head, the Bible says repent from that because that's an unclean thing. All you brothers chasing hog pots, chasing tail, chasing ass, out here having sex with these women and not marrying them, the Bible says repent from that. All right, keep reading. Repent uh -huh. and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. Turn yourself from what? All your transgressions. Uh -huh. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. So that iniquity shall not be your ruin. Because our people are ruined here in America. We are destroyed here in America. You ask five, sister, if you ask five black people what's their nationality, what do you what's what's one of them gonna say, my sister? Okay, all praise. The sister understands she an Israelite. But if we ask brothers and sisters that don't understand that, they're going to say, I'm, I'm black, I'm African American, I'm Baptist, I'm Pentecostal, everything under God's green earth except for an Israelite. But all praises to the Most High. My sister, you understand you an Israelite. That's Josiah White. Oh, all praises to the Most High. All praises to the Most High. We need to see you at the school, my sister. We need to see you at the school. The Bible says that since you understand you're an Israelite, there's a certain duty that you have. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 10. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 10. Matter of fact, give me Sirach 25 and 1. I'm going to show you why it's so important that you come to the school with your husband. This is what the Most High God says about a husband and a wife. A husband and a wife is a beautiful thing under these conditions. Read that. The book of Sirach chapter 25 verse 1. Read. In three things I was beautified. So the, the scripture say in three things was the Lord beautified. Read. And stood up beautiful both before God and men. Keep reading. The unity of brethren. The unity of brethren, my sister, is a beautiful thing. Keep reading. The love of neighbors. The love of neighbors, a strong community. It's a beautiful thing. Keep reading. A man and a wife that agree together. The Bible says a man and a wife that agree together is a beautiful thing, my sister. It's a beautiful thing, my sister. So we should never see my brother at the school and not see his wife right next to him. Not say he's not see his wife right next to him. Give me First Corinthians chapter 11. Because the Most High God has established an order for the household that when it's instituted, will take over this whole planet Earth. The whole reason the so-called blacks and Hispanics are on the bottom right now is because the black man and the black woman are at odds with each other. Because they're separated from each other. Because the black man go to this church and his wife go to that church. Because the black man is uh, in the truth, but his wife is in seven-day Adventism. But the Bible says that the beautiful, the most beautiful thing is for a husband and a wife to agree together right. in one. Read this. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Read. But I will have you know uh -huh. that the head of every man is Christ. So the, before we can get to that unity between the husband and the wife, the order must be established. The, all praises, my sister. All praises, my sister. The Bible says that in order for this order to be established, it must be understood that what? But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Man, you can't do your own thing. There's no such thing as doing me. There's no such thing as, uh, I'm going to do me, you're going to do you. Nah, we got a head. We have a ruler. We have a leader that commands us to operate in a certain way. That's the very first thing. Keep reading. And the head of the woman is the man. And then the woman got to get in line right behind that. We got to submit to our leader, which is Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. That's right. And then right after that, the woman got to get in line with her husband, a black Messiah for her. That's right. right. You understand that? The black man is the savior of the so-called black woman. Right. Jesus Christ is not the Lord of the black woman. The black man is the Lord of the black woman. Bring it out. And she got to do everything that black man say as long as he's telling her, to stay in the way of the Most High God, keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments. All right? Now, did we finish that order? No, no, we ain't finished the order. Keep uh -huh. The head of the woman is the man, uh -huh. and the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. Christ stayed in order with the Most High God. The man got to stay in order with Christ, and that woman got to fall in line. She got to get in subjection to her husband. That's how we take back this kingdom, all right? We used to scream black power 
while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.